Hey everyone, I hope we're all doing well. Today's video is going to be about certifications once again. And today I'm going to show you guys my note taking process for the CompTSC YSA Plus certification. And the reason why I decided to make this video, it's because the video I made talking about my exam experience and my journey is actually doing pretty well. It has around 9,000 views or something like that. So I guess there are a couple of people interested in taking this exam. And since I want to provide some value for you guys, I decided to make this video. So, and I'm going to try to make it short because I get really excited when I talk about education and learning and studying and yeah. So let's just get started with the first thing, which is it, it's really important for you to write down the, the resources that you're going to use. Um, so the first resource that I use is obviously um, the CompTIA exam objectives guide and as you can see here in this document you can pretty much check everything you need for the exam uh, the test details the exam objectives you can actually see the percentages for each domain and yeah this is really useful and i think you should absolutely use this as you're studying because you can actually check out every subtopic every every domain every tool every methodology that you should be familiar with yeah, this is really, really useful. Make sure you use this document from, and you download it from CompTIA's website. Next, I use the Cybex study guide. Um, I also use Jason Dion's Udemy course for the CYC Plus. I also did some trihackney rooms uh, to practice with some tools. And here's my voucher that I, I'm not going to show you guys for obvious reasons. Um, although I already used it, so I don't know if there would be any problem. I mean, I digress, so let's continue. So the first thing I did when I started studying was I, I just started to read the book from cover to cover because I, I like to think that I have a good memory. Um, and my idea was, okay, I'm just going to read the book. I'm going to underline the things that I, that I think that are important. And then I'm just, I'm just gonna go for the exam. Uh, dumb me because here you cannot do that at least in my opinion I did that for security plus um, which in my opinion was uh, easier than the CYSA plus uh, because here you really have to understand the concepts and you should be able to use those concepts the, those methodologies those tools for a specific scenario so you have to be able to understand why a specific thing is used in a practical way. So I started, I started to read the book um, for the second time. And as I was doing it, I decided to take a lot of notes and to write down my own flashcards. Uh, and I, I think I ended up doing like 300 flashcards or something like that. Uh, but um, yeah, so let's check the notes that I, that I took while I was reading the book for the second time. As you can see here, we have 16 sections. Um, the book has 16 chapters, so you understand why we have that number here. And as I click down each section, you can see that there are a lot of subtopics from each chapter of the book. Yeah, there are a lot of things that you should be familiar with and you should understand. And I didn't do this just for the sake of doing it. I, I did this because I was trying to make sure that I was able to explain things, to explain, to explain those concepts using my own words. So that's why I decided to make this for each chapter of the book and for each subtopic. Then after doing this, what I did was I decided to test myself using the Cybex um, practice questions book which has, I think, 1,000 questions plus two practice exams. But I saved the practice exams for later and I used the 1,000 questions to see uh, where were my weak links at that point. Um, and as I did, I found a lot of weak links. And after doing those 1,000 questions, I created this section here, things I must know. And here I created these um, three subsections for tools, ports and protocols and concepts to review. So let's start with the tools. So yeah, I you can see already here, I created these huge tables for, for the tools. But the first thing that I did that was not actually really smart was I was trying to write a note for 
every tool and I soon realized that okay this is not going to be possible because there are so many tools and this is not really smart and it's not easy for me to study from these notes because there would be like 100 notes here so I created these huge tables um, this blue one goes for Windows tools the red goes for Linux here you have the Mac OS tools uh, with the yellow and the reason why you just have the parallels here, MicroS just has one tool here, that's weird, right? Um, no, it's because uh, the, tools that, the tools that you can use on, on MacOS are pretty much all uh, cross-platform. So that's why we have this green table here, um, because here you have the tools that are available for you in every operating system, pretty much. So yeah, these tables were really useful for me, but make sure you also uh, try to get a little bit of practice with the tools and you may be asking okay but there are a hundred tools there how, how how is it possible for me to know how to work with all of them you don't need to do that um, as you can see here i have the name for each tool i have the purpose and i have a brief description right so let's grab like a linux look you'd like cron tab for example so cron tab you can see the purpose it's a schedule task viewer and in the description I have, it's a command line tool uh, to list schedule tasks on Linux, blah, 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 blah. So this is theoretical knowledge. So you know uh, why this tool is, is used or what it is used for. But then if you come right here and you came and you come here for, I guess it's 1.4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just, just, check, just check this, this, um, this point here for the exam. Uh, objectives. Given a scenario, analyze the output from common vulnerability assessment tools. So here you can look at pretty much the most important tools that you should be familiar with. So be smart about this, like read these objectives and try to understand, okay, which tools are the most important for me to know and to be familiar with, and then try to make some try hack me rooms for each one of them and try to get familiar with the tools in a practical way. That, that's really important for the exam. Then I just wrote down the common TCP ports that I was getting in like every question. Um, and I did the same for the protocols. These five protocols were showing in pretty much every question that, that was asking for something uh, regarding uh, protocols. So yeah, this is, this is not special at all. This is just for me to memorize stuff. Um, and then for me, the most important one was this section here. After doing the 1000 questions, I discovered that I had a lot of weak links. Um, not only theoretical weak links like, oh, I, I didn't remember this or that. No, no, no. Practical as well. So as you can see here, do the Wireshark room on Try Hack Me. Because I thought I was familiar with Wireshark uh, at that point. And I, I was, kind of. But whenever a, a question came out um, regarding Wireshark, I was failing those questions. I don't know why. Uh, but after doing the, the practical room on Try Hack Me and after investing a little bit more time on each of these topics, I was able to... Uh, correct those weak links and I actually got lucky because my exam had a lot of questions regarding these topics I don't know why but yeah that that really happened I swear on my life so yeah it's really it's really important for you to know uh, where you should focus more because there are topics that are more difficult for you for some reason or maybe you don't have experience in some field regarding cybersecurity and by doing that, those practice questions, you, you will find out. You will find out for sure uh, what are the topics that you should work a little bit more. So after doing that, I, I studied a little bit more um, each of these topics individually. And I went for the two practice exams that I passed pretty easily. And then I did the exam and passed on my first attempt. And yeah, uh, thank God it all went well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I did uh, when it comes to note taking for the CYSA plus. And when it comes to studying, there's not, um, there's not really any magical tricks. You really have to sit down and do it. 
um, and this was my methodology if you have any different methodology or if you have any different way of doing these things please share it with me in the comments because I really want to learn from you guys um, yeah and I think that's it for today's video I hope you guys liked it I hope I could provide any value for you I hope you will pass on your exam on your first attempt and if you need any help or if you have any question just let me know and i'll see you in the next video bye